Pre-Analysis Quality Check. We will review how to do a pre-analysis quality check to verify that the test was properly implemented. See the API video, Basic Bail-Down Testing Procedures to measure LNAPL transmissivity for proper field procedures. The quality check includes, one, does the recharge into the well represent formation discharge or filter pack discharge? Two, did the fluid elevations return to equilibrium? Three, did the initial fluid elevations represent equilibrium? Four, did the water table vary during the test? And five, is data filtering required? Does the recharge into the well represent formation discharge or filter pack discharge? Check the volume of LNAPL that was removed versus the volume of LNAPL in the casing and filter pack that was calculated based on the data input in the yellow boxes in rows 4 through 11. If the calculated volume is greater than the removed volume, you can expect to see filter pack discharge in your test data. However, the calculated volume is an estimate, so it is recommended to check for filter pack discharge even when sufficient LNAPL was removed. Field procedures to minimize the filter pack discharge are presented in the API video, Basic Bail-Down Testing Procedures to measure LNAPL transmissivity. You can recognize filter pack discharge on Figure 3, the LNAPL Drawdown versus Discharge, or DVD, chart. Assuming unconfined LNAPL and a single mobile NAPL interval, the DVD should show a linear relationship between drawdown and discharge where the slope intersects the origin of the graph at zero drawdown, zero discharge. An inflection point between the two slopes typically indicates where filter pack discharge ends and formation discharge begins. The high discharge, high drawdown portion of the data that slopes towards the drawdown axis instead of towards zero discharge, zero drawdown, represents filter pack discharge and should be excluded from the analysis. Did the fluid elevations return to equilibrium? Detailed instructions to check if the fluid elevations have returned to equilibrium are presented in the API video, Basic Bail-Down Testing Procedures to Measure LNAPL Transmissivity. To briefly review, check. The hydrographs in figures one and two, where the depth to LNAPL and depth to water should have returned to and stabilized at their pre-test equilibrium values. The DVD in Figure 3, where both the LNAPL drawdown and LNAPL discharge should be zero. Physically, this means that when the LNAPL drawdown is zero, representing equilibrium conditions, no LNAPL is discharging into the well. The LNAPL thickness versus time chart in Figure 7, which should display a characteristic S-curve, where the LNAPL thickness has stabilized. Particularly for LNAPL transmissivity tests with a long time frame, it can be challenging to determine how long the conditions should be stable to signify the end of the test. A helpful rule of thumb is to change figure 7 to a logarithmic base 10 scale. If the chart displays the characteristic S-curve with three stable data points over half of a log cycle, the test is complete and the LNAPL is at equilibrium. Did the initial fluid elevations represent equilibrium? The initial fluid levels entered on the data tab are used as the pre-test equilibrium values and are the basis for the LNAPL drawdown calculations. LNAPL drawdown is one of the most important parameters to calculate LNAPL transmissivity. Incorrectly identifying the equilibrium fluid elevations can introduce significant error into the estimation of LNAPL transmissivity. Review the section of this video on identifying filter pack discharge, the section on identifying equilibrium conditions, and the interpretation of example data sets to better understand when a test is complete. In many cases, monitoring over a longer period of time to capture the entire recharge profile is all that is required. If you confirm that the test is complete, but the initial fluid levels were not at equilibrium, the best practice is to repeat the test starting from equilibrium conditions. The API LNAPL transmissivity workbook does include an option to perform a drawdown adjustment to account for non-equilibrium initial fluid elevations. However, even small drawdown adjustments can lead to significant changes in the estimated results. We commonly see practitioners wrongly identify non-equilibrium pretest conditions 
and inappropriately apply a drawdown adjustment when the data actually represents incomplete tests where filter pack discharge is still ongoing. General guidelines for appropriate use of the drawdown adjustment tool are, if filter pack discharge is not present and the LNAPL thickness stabilizes, three points over half a log scale on figure seven, at a larger thickness than the original thickness, use of the drawdown adjustment may be appropriate. If the LNAPL thickness at the end of the test is smaller than the original thickness, use of the drawdown adjustment is not recommended. If the test was dominated by filter pack discharge with no consistent recovery beyond this period, then the drawdown adjustment is not recommended. Any use of the drawdown adjustment should be discussed in the report text. Detailed guidelines for appropriate use of the drawdown adjustment tool are beyond the scope of this video. Again, the recommended best practice is to have a clear understanding of equilibrium conditions prior to testing to ensure no adjustment will be required. Failing this, the recommended best practice is to repeat the bail-down test once equilibrium conditions are identified and achieved. Did the water table vary during the test? Under ideal test conditions, the water table on figures 1 and 2 should be constant for the duration of the bail-down test. However, real-world conditions often deviate from this ideal due to water being removed from the well during the initiation of the bail-down test and or due to changing groundwater elevations at the site. The API LNAPL Transmissivity Workbook can be used to interpret bail-down tests where the water table is static or still recovering from the liquid removal activities. While it is a good field practice to minimize the removal of water when initiating a bail-down test, the analysis methods can accommodate water removal through the use of the J-ratio. The J-ratio adjusts the transmissivity calculations for the relative amounts of LNAPL and water that are recharging into the well. It is identified using Figure 4. The x-axis represents measured LNAPL thickness, and the y-axis represents the calculated LNAPL drawdown. The J-ratio is the slope of a line fitted to the data to be analyzed, excluding the filter pack discharge identified on Figure 3. Use the yellow boxes to fit the dotted red line to your test data. The J-ratio may change during the test. For example, it may change if the water table is initially recovering to static conditions and then is constant for the remainder of the test. The data associated with each trend would need to be analyzed for LNAPL transmissivity separately. For a detailed explanation of the J-ratio, see the API LNAPL Transmissivity User Guide, Appendix A. The workbook cannot account for background changes in water table or potentiometric surface elevations. Changes in the elevation of the static potentiometric surface, or air LNAPL interface, by an amount that is small relative to the LNAPL drawdown induced will result in an error that is small in comparison to the final LNAPL transmissivity value. The workbook will not quantify the error, but the final result may be acceptable. Large changes in the falling or rising water table relative to LNAPL drawdown will likely require a repeat of the test under more favorable conditions. Alternate transmissivity test methods should be considered where groundwater elevations are consistently changing, such as in tidally influenced locations. Is data filtering required? Data filtering is recommended in many cases, and implementing it can often improve the interpretation of bail-down test results. As described in the API video, Basic Bail-Down Testing Procedures to Measure LNAPL Transmissivity, the minimum recommended frequency for collecting fluid elevations is to capture changes of up to 10% of the equilibrium LNAPL thickness, or 0.05 feet, whichever is larger. Under real-world conditions, additional data is frequently collected in the beginning of the test to establish the ongoing gauging frequency and to collect some redundant data to ensure nothing is missed. Data filtering is required when this redundant data leads to the calculation of negative LNAPL discharge or LNAPL drawdown data. Data filtering is also recommended when the DVD, figure 3, does not have clear interpretable trends. Typically, these negative calculations occur when the fluid elevations are gauged relatively frequently and the gauging error is larger than the fluid elevation changes. 
Filtering the data captures the overall trend documented by all gauging measurements and eliminates unnecessary or outlying data points. Some trial and error is typically required to determine the best data set to use. General guidelines to select a valid data set include the LNAPL thickness should increase from point to point by a magnitude that is realistically and accurately measurable by the tools used in the field. The intervals between data points will ideally represent consistent changes in LNAPL thickness. Figure 7 can be utilized to help identify the trend and select appropriate points. The time between data points is anticipated to increase as the test progresses and the discharge rate reduces. For unconfined LNAPL, consistent time intervals should not be considered. Negative changes in LNAPL discharge and LNAPL drawdown should be filtered out. Small adjustments in the selected data may improve the interpretation of key charts, such as the trends on the DVD on Figure 3. Objective review of the data is required to select the best representation of the documented behavior exhibited and not cherry-pick data to force a trend that is not present. When filtering the data, remember to only delete the data from the data tab in the yellow boxes in columns B, C, and D, and then resort the test data. Deleting entire rows from the worksheet will affect subsequent calculations and make the workbook not usable. If data is filtered or deleted from the data tab, the original unfiltered data should always be retained and reported as appropriate with any submitted reports.